Welcome. Welcome to An Introduction to Programming with Scratch in Education. Wow, that's a mouthful of a title. But welcome. My name is Dr. Ben Shaver. I'm an Associate Professor of Computer Science at the University of Northern Iowa. It's my voice that you're going to be hearing in the videos that you will be viewing over the duration of this course. Now, you may have the opportunity to interact with me via email or video chat, or you may not. This may be our only chance to meet. But regardless of whether we ever get that chance to meet beyond this, I wanted to make sure that you knew who I was. And then on behalf of the University of Northern Iowa and Google, who was our corporate partner in the original creation of this course, that I welcomed you to what I hope will be a very beneficial course. Through the learning units in this course, you're going to get a chance to program and interact with Scratch, a programming language that I have found to be a very powerful graphical environment for students of all ages. Now, we aren't going to learn every last feature of Scratch. The content of this course, however, was designed to give you enough exposure to a wide variety of commands and uses so that you can feel comfortable introducing Scratch to your students. I've been teaching Scratch since about 2007. During that time, I've had the opportunity to teach it to elementary students, secondary students, college students, and even adult learners, many of them in-service teachers like yourself. I've discovered that Scratch is an exciting way to engage students of all ages and all experience levels with creativity and problem solving, things that are often associated with both computer programming and computer science. I'm hoping that over the modules in this course, you too can begin to see how Scratch can be incorporated into your classroom, regardless of what your classroom happens to look like. The modules contained in this course were designed to be appropriate for a wide range of learners. We're confident that if you give this course the time it deserves, approximately three to five hours per unit, then you'll come away being comfortable using Scratch with your students. As you complete this course, you're going to notice that the bulk of the lesson videos were prepared in short segments. And I'm talking to you as though you were sitting in a computer beside me, working along with me at the exact same time. That's because that's exactly what I want you to do. Take the time to work along with the videos and explore additional functionality at your leisure and comfort level. Understand this, you don't actually have to become an expert in Scratch. You really don't you only have to learn enough to point students in the right direction. From years of experience, I'll tell you that a significant part of Scratch will basically teach itself, especially if you're using Scratch after coming out of the code.org curriculum. If you can get your students' curiosity up and running, you'll be fine and they'll learn a lot. If you can acquire a base knowledge through this course, students will be very receptive when you say to them things like, I don't know how that works. Let's figure it out together. Having said that, know that I'm always available to answer your questions, not only during this course this summer, but during the upcoming school year as you work with your students. My suggestion to you is this. Make sure you set aside enough time over the duration of this course to complete the course at a comfortable pace. Uh, we do not set an expectation of a certain pace with this course. For example, you don't need to complete one unit per week. There are no deadlines other than the final course completion deadline. However, we encourage you to make sure that you don't try to cram everything in at once. Make sure you plan appropriately to take enough time to digest what you'll be learning. My suggestion, set aside two to three hours one day to work through the lesson videos of a single unit. Don't just watch the lecture videos straight through, one right after the other. Instead, work along with them. Stop the videos from time to time, tinker with what you've just been doing, and if you have an interesting thought or an idea, try it out. Make sure you give an honest effort to attempt each of the ungraded assignments. Again, we don't see them, but it'll help if you've done them. After you finish the bulk of the lesson materials for a single unit, walk away for a day or two before you come back and attempt the actual graded homework assignment. I strongly recommend that when you completely finish a single unit, again, you walk away for 24 hours and come back a few days later to start up again. 
Now, it might seem like plowing right through this course, one unit right after another, is a good idea. After all, everything's fresh in your head, you'll be able to keep moving. Our experience has been the exact opposite turns out to be true. Trying to cram in multiple modules in a single day simply does not give you the chance to reflect and digest the material that you are learning. Now, on the other hand, try to make enough progress each week that you can take advantage of assistance as needed. While I'm not sitting here waiting for your questions over the duration of the course, I am monitoring the course on a, practically a daily basis. And please know I'm here to help you. I want you to succeed, and I want to interact with you. And I am willing to answer your questions via email or online video chat. Bottom line, I'm here to help, and I want you to succeed. Now, one quick side note. Many of the videos used in this course were recorded at different times over the last couple of years. Because Scratch is now an online programming tool, it's very easy for the creators to integrate updates, which include making minor modifications, adding new features, and potentially adding or removing assets such as sprites and background images, which are available for you to use. Therefore, it is possible that you will see a screenshot that doesn't 100% agree with what you're seeing when you look at Scratch. Similarly, I've made a few minor modifications over the years to the structure of this course. Therefore, while I've made an honest attempt to make sure that what you see mostly mimics what we're doing and what is on Scratch right now, it is very possible that I've missed something. If at any time you encounter a video, a graphic, a paragraph, a text, anything like that, that just doesn't make sense or agree with what you're seeing yourself, or let's face reality, if you find a spelling error on one of my pages, I'm going to ask you to feel free to send me an email and let me know about your concerns. I want this course to be a great experience for you and everyone else so you can help me by making sure that the materials that you interact with are as good as they can possibly be. Having said all that, I'm excited to be working with you over the duration of this course. So if you're ready to get started, click on the course materials link which should be located just above this video. Click on that link for Unit 1, Getting Started with Scratch, start working your way through the course. But most importantly, have fun and let me know what I can do to help.